Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AgriVoc Making Research More Visible Across Languages webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, my name is Chelsea Scalese, and I am a communication specialist at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, also known as FAO. And I'm also part of the FAO Agora support team. I will be presenting today's webinar along with my colleague, Kristen Kolschus. So just some housekeeping notes before we begin. I see, you know, people are still trickling in, so I'll try and begin here a little slowly so no one misses anything important. Um, but we are recording today's webinar, and the webinar recording and presentation will be available after the webinar is finished. Uh, we will distribute the recording to all of you, all of you that are here participating today, as soon as it is ready. We ask that while we're going through the presentation, if you guys could just keep yourselves mood muted, um, there will be a more interactive portion of the presentation where I believe Kristen will ask for some input and we'll do that via the chat box. We should also have some time at the end for questions and comments. Um, you'll be welcome to unmute yourselves at that point. You can you know, just unmute yourself, raise your hand however you prefer. If you have questions or comments throughout the presentation and you don't want to forget them, feel free to just put them in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer all of those questions at the end. Um, if you do feel at the end we haven't gotten to one of your questions, um, you can always email us at agora at And we'll, again, we'll do our best to answer all of those questions. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So today I wanted to start off with a little bit more information about FOWL. So the Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, is a specialized agency of the United Nations that leads international efforts to defeat hunger. Our goal is to achieve food security for all and make sure that people have regular access to enough high quality food to lead active, healthy lives. And currently FAO works in over 130 countries worldwide. We accomplish our goals by making scientific research and technical knowledge related to all aspects of food and agriculture available and accessible worldwide through a series of initi initiatives, including Agora, Agrivoc, and Agris. And these three initiatives help us to promote the accessibility of scientific information and data in food and agriculture. They also uh, help to strengthen the engagement of international, regional, and national organizations in helping to increase access to agricultural data. And they also help to improve the quality and effectiveness of agriculture research and education. And this exchange of knowledge, information, and importantly, data, not only support FAO's work for a world free of hunger and poverty, but also contributes to the achievement of the sustainable development goals. Now, today we're going to touch on all three of these initiatives and learn a little bit more about each. Uh, we're going to have a heavy focus on Agrivoc and its importance for Research for Life and Agora users. And just for some, uh, as a side note and additional background information, Research for Life recently integrated FAO's Agrivoc as a reference source in the Agora collection. And this new development allows Research for Life and Agora users to access Agrivoc directly through the Agora content portal. And this is one of the many reasons we thought today's webinar would be insightful and helpful for all of you joining us today. I'm going to allow Kristen to explain more in depth to you about Agrivoc and its importance to Research for Life and Agora users um, when she takes over in just a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to be sure to highlight the connection between Research for Life and Agora and Agrivoc before we continue in today's webinar. So with that, um, we can continue and I'm gonna highlight some information about Agora. Um, so what exactly is Agora? And I'm sure many of you are already familiar and you know a lot of this was mentioned in the video we highlighted at the beginning, but FAO has led the access to global online research in agriculture, also known as Agora collection since 2003. 
and Agora provides access to thousands of high quality journals, ebooks, and other information resources covering all of FAO's areas of interest in public institutions in eligible countries throughout the world. And the goal of the collection is to reduce the knowledge gap and improve the quality and effectiveness of agricultural research, education, and training in low and middle income countries. And Agora is one of the five collections that make up Research for Life, which I just previously mentioned. And so what exactly is Research for Life? Uh, like Agora, the goal of Research for Life is to reduce the knowledge gap between high income and low and middle income countries. And in addition to the agricultural partnership Research for Life has with FAO, um, Research for Life also provides affordable access to critical scientific research in the fields of health, environment, applied sciences, law and innovation, and uh, many other subject areas. So in addition to Agora, like I said, the other Research for Life collections include Hinati, which is Research for Health, OARE, which is Research in the Environment, RD, which is Research for Innovation, and GOLI, which is Research for Global Justice. And I've also included a link on this slide directly to more information about all of the other Research for Life collections. Um, since today, like I said, we're focusing specifically on the uh, three FAO initiatives I already mentioned, including Agora, Agrivolk, and Agris. But feel free to also check out the link here and learn more about the other collections available through the different partnerships in Research for Life if you feel interested. Um, so with that, I am going to hand it over to my colleague, Kristen. So over to you, Kristen. So hello, everyone. Thank you, Chelsea. That was wonderful, as always. We, we will go into the presentation. Let's see. Can you see the slide okay? Yes, perfect. Fantastic. So as Chelsea said, uh, Agora, Hinari, Iwata, Goli, and Research for, Research for Life for All are fantastic programs. It's all about improving the access and flow of information, especially research. And that, of course, is key to you as Research for Life users, which I think many of you are. So uh, you may be a researcher, a student, a lecturer, a librarian. You may be working in information systems. So overall, you both you consume, you produce, and you provide research and information. So you know that uh, using the correct keywords is really important. And of course, much of the information in, uh, and research published today is published in English. However, you could be doing research or creating data sets in, in any language. And that is uh, why we think that Agrivoc can complement Research for Life and Agora. And uh, as you know, we will have, some of you will have done the Research for Life online courses. You know that information literacy is key. And when you are looking for information, it could be a data set, an article, and anything, Using the right keywords really impacts what you find. And uh, those of you who are librarians, please feel free to add comments on this in the chat. We know that um, information is there, but finding the right coherent, up-to-date information, keywords make a difference. Also, if you are publishing, you may, uh, you may be publishing um, articles and the journal will usually ask you to submit keywords. How do you know what the right keywords are to include? So this is why um, Agrivoc can be a useful tool for you in this and help that using the right keywords will help you make sure that your articles are findable, visible, indexable, and uh, accessible to people. And this goes back again to that the fact that using standardized terminology is really important. So Agrivoc, Chelsea mentioned this. So Agrivoc, you may have heard about it, you may have not. It is a multilingual thesaurus, and it covers concepts and terminology under FAO's areas of interest, which of course overlap very closely with Research for Life's area of interest. Fisheries, forestry, social sciences, statistics, nutrition, much, much more. It is uh, coordinated by FAO, but we have a wonderful Agrivoc editorial network. 
which is a group of um, organizations, about 34 from 24 different countries, and they manage different language versions and different domains. We have specialists working on land governance, on fisheries, and uh, soil science, other topics. And I've seen that some of the Agrivoc editors are here today, so they're also welcome to provide comments in the chat if they want to add anything. We have about um, over 41,000 concepts, and I think today we actually hit about 995,000 terms. These are labels for each, I'll come back to this, and up to 42 different languages. And so it's a huge collection of information, but it is structured and it is accessible. And why it is useful? It is useful to because it is uh, used to index publications, documents, websites, data sets, and importantly, Agravoc is used by both humans and machines, which is important for making the information accessible. And the link to our website is here. I will continue. So again, why is it useful? You could be someone searching for keywords. You may want to know the synonym for soil science, for animal health, for disease. You may want to know what uh, land governance is in my language. I could be a journal editor saying, uh, what are some keywords you could use in a standardized way to present your article? I could be a library. I could be a librarian also looking for how do I make accessible information accessible and how do I search better? I could be a researcher and looking at to um, select the right keywords to describe my data set or article or information, or I could be looking to find information. I could be someone using uh, an information system, a website, back end of something, or it could be a translator. We have a wide range of users and uh, we know it's used a lot, which makes us uh, really happy. But um, some of you may be new users, which is why we're very happy to have the chance to talk to you today. So I'll come back to where you can find us. The website, of course, is fav.org slash agrivoc. And I'll show you in a little bit where you can find it on the Research for Life and Agora pages. So just to go back a little bit, how when we say it's used to tag and index publications, what does that mean? So here, here are a couple examples. You can see on the left, we have um, our CGIR colleagues. They have... Um, there's a, there's a publication about karma days. You can see here at the bottom, I've chosen a selection of keywords, climate change, conservation, agriculture, carbon, carbon sequestration. These are all really important words. And I've used those to tag the keywords so they can find it. On the right with a green image, you can see we're also looking at C4. This is a forestry organization in the CJR. We are uh, using an Agrivoc keyword to look through publications because there are hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of publications. If I want to sift through them a little bit, it can be really useful to choose a keyword to go deeper, which of course we'll also have done once you've used um, the Research for Life interface in Summon. I think many of you will also have had the pleasure of using Agris. Agris is another of our sister systems, the International System for Agricultural Science and Technology. And also here, you will see on the lower left tier in blue labels, these are Agrivoc labels used to index and tag in Agris resources. So there's always new ones coming in. And it's really important for us also to see the influx of keywords there. And uh, we, of course, we highly recommend you explore Agris. It's another set of literature that may be very useful for you, especially as researchers. So we talked about keywords across languages. So here's an example of a relatively new FAO publication. You can see the um, set of keywords here in English, but we also have the same keywords in the other six FAO languages. And this is the beauty of Agrivoc, not just these six languages, but also wider. I can go and search for cost benefit analysis, cost benefit analysis. I can find publications in Thai. I can search in Thai and find documents in Ukrainian. I can search in Ukrainian and find documents in Belarusian or Brazilian Portuguese. So it's all about being able to find materials across languages, which is the beauty of something like Agrivoc. 
Any question in the chat, please, please uh, stop me. So as Chelsea mentioned, we are really pleased that Agrivoc has just been added to the Research for Life resources. And if we haven't seen it, we just wanted to highlight these are, there are a couple of different ways you can find uh, Agrivoc through Research for Life. You could go in through the recent online information resources, and you can see things that have been added recently. And of course, the Research for Life team is wonderful about looking for new resources that may be useful to you in your work. So we're pleased that we are included there. So you can see it's uh, the third one on this list. Uh, I can see somebody's asking in the, in the chat, is the difference between a keyword and thesaurus? We'll come back to that. Um, a thesaurus includes keywords. So a thesaurus is a collection, a structured collection of keywords. But in that you would have concepts like fisheries, forestry, carbon sequestration, those would be keywords. So yes, we can. I see questions about animal health. That's a very good point. We can look that up when we do the, the search examples. Another way to find uh, Agrivoc is if I go in through the um, Agora portal, I can also find it listed under reference sources. So just two different ways to find it. So if you clicked on that and you clicked on Agrivoc, I'll show you very quickly what you would see. Then you would go to our interface. And um, this is the typical interface we have. On the left, we have the alphabetical list of the 41,000 concepts. There's a hierarchy. You can also search that way. Um, I just want to highlight that um, you, can, you can also change the content language to the 42 different languages available. And, or I could also change the interface language, which you can choose to, to change to English, Spanish, French, Chinese, Arabic, and Russian. And as you can see, we, uh, we, we have monthly releases and we just updated Agrivoc this morning. So this is the absolutely newest version online today. And uh, to, if I was going to search, I'll show you that before we go into the practical one. I want to highlight first that uh, an important thing to know is that when you're looking yeah. in Agrivoc, you could look at a concept that it could have a preferred label I could have alternate labels. So here I might be interested in the topic of water conservation. And that is in English, the preferred label. But I could also look for entry terms. These are what we call alternative labels or synonyms. So there I could also be, I could also be searching for conserving water, water protection as a resource or water saving. And those are all synonyms for water conservation. So I can search for conserving water and I will find water conservation. So just be aware you may find synonyms. So um, there are a couple of different ways to find the information. And if I am searching, you will see that there's a search bar here on the top right. That's where it says search, you can put things in. But before we go into the live search, because you might want to try this yourself, if I simply search for here on the left, you can see the example of up APPLI, appliances, applied research, etc. So that gives me everything that begins with the words, the letters APPLI. If I actually want to search for anything that includes it, then I have to use wildcards, which is asterisk, APPLI, asterisk. So I will show you how that works when I go into the live chat, live search. So we will go exactly, here we go. So this is an example where we're using the wild cards. And instead of looking for registration, I'm looking for star, R-E-J-I-S star, and I get everything that includes register, registration, land register, things that uh, could also be very relevant for you. So with that, we will go into, you can see the live chat that Chelsea has put into the chat, the live, uh, the link for the live search. So if you want to try yourself while we go along, please, Let's do that. And I'm going to jump into this. Can everyone now see the search screen? Yes. yes. Fantastic. So I can see, um, so please go ahead and try this as well. So if I uh, use the example here, I can search for research. And I get everything starting with research. There's about 20 of them. And you can see some of them have many, many languages. Some of them have a few research facilities, research grants, various other ones. 
maybe I'm, I want to expand it a little bit. Then I put the wild card in like this. This is a really useful function. And then I expand it suddenly to 52 research related terminology. So maybe I want to look up uh, agricultural research systems. So here I can see it's a relatively new one for the recent years. Agrovic is more than 40 years. So we, uh, we have new concepts and ones that have been there for many, many years. And here I can look up agricultural research systems in different languages. I can see that somebody was asking about zoonosis. So if I type in zoonosis, I can see that we have zoonosis, but I also have an entry term called zoonotic diseases. So it's a synonym. And here we have the concept zoonosis, which tells me that uh, we're talking about animals, uh, diseases or infections transmissible from animals to humans. This is very important in, in today's uh, health uh, research. I can see it's uh, those examples of various zoonosis included. I can scroll down and see it's related to One Health. There's a couple different synonyms, anthro anthropozoonosis and zoonotic diseases. It talks a little bit about other related ones. And I can scroll down and see labels for zoonosis in many, many languages, hopefully also some of yours. Do we have any, uh, I think somebody also asked about animal health. So this is not research in itself, but it's keywords related to these things. So you could use these keywords in an information system to help you find things. So um, this is, uh, Mr. Said was asking about animal health. You can see there are examples of narrower terms, utter health, welfare, veterinary services, other areas that are also related to animal health. And again, and we have just labels for the concept animal health in many, many languages. And these are generally contributed by the network of Agrivoc editors. So um, yeah, I can see a question there from uh, Ola saying, a lot of African languages are left out. Absolutely. We have uh, an excellent collaboration at the moment with um, through Makerere University, and we are working on improving Swahili numbers at the moment. And uh, But if someone is interested in uh, contributing to other languages, of course, we're absolutely interested in this. Generally, um, we would like someone to uh, engage from an institutional point of view. So generally, editors don't serve in, in a personal capacity, they serve on behalf of a university, a library, a research system, a ministry. We have a, a very diverse group of uh, network of editors. But if someone is interested, please get in touch with us. Our email is agrovoc at fow.org. Especially if you have a use case where you said you might use, you might need to have Amharic or Kinyarwandan in an information system, let us know. It's also possible to start with a smaller group of concepts. It doesn't have to be 40,000. It can be a smaller group if that is useful. Someone said there's a problem with the sound. Can you hear me okay? No, I can hear you perfectly okay. well. Good. Um, I can see a question possible from Madagascar. Fontanana, do we have to sign in to use the platform? No, you do not. It is, uh, you can sign in and use Agrivoc even outside Research for Life. It is very accessible. I think perhaps we can put the, the uh, link for in the chat again. Do we have any more, more examples of something you would like to look for? Yes, I'm abs you're absolutely right, Evanson. It is largely spoken in certain areas. So we are happy to include other languages, but again, it's usually, we need to be working with an institution to, uh, because the institution then curates the language, looks after it. Do you have any questions or any, any uh, examples of something you would like to um, like me to look for? In the meantime, I can, I can use the example here of switching to French just to have uh, one of the, we're gonna focus on English today, but there are many, many other languages. I can switch to French. And then I see the terminology listed in French. You can see when I did that, also the uh, hierarchy here on the left switched to French. 
I can also switch the entire interface and go to French if that's more useful for you. So then you can see we've switched there. I'm going to go back to English on the content, but I could I could look for the languages here. So if I needed to search for, um, you can see there are a range of languages here. I can search any specific language. I can search in any language like this. So if I want to look at quality, now um, I'm searching in, in any language. I want to look at quality. And you have a whole range of different quality related concepts. I have a question for COVID. Yes, I will come back to that in a minute. That is a very good one. So you asked about, do we have COVID? Yes, we do. And this is a, this interesting one because COVID is one of the our newer concepts, of course. Yeah, it sure. uh, was suggested by a um, by IFPRI, a research institution in the CGIR. And they, they, they said, we need to index things. This was back in, um, we can see when it was created in 2019, 2020, we created it. And uh, they said, we need to index things about it, but we don't have the keyword. So we added it. And then, of course, it is then picked up by their information system. They were able to include it. So here we have COVID. We have definitions of it in three languages. I can see it's a type. It uh, belongs under zoonosis. And we also have history notes because we started out initially listing it as, um, as, as the longer name with the uh, coronavirus disease 2019. But as time went on, WHO said, no acronym, we, we're going to use the acronym here because that is actually used more both by both uh, the public and especially by technical experts. So we, in that case, we changed it. So you can, so, um, we can say it is caused by the virus name. So the virus belongs there and it causes COVID-19. But this, this was a nice example where someone needed to index something and um, they were able to contact us and say, please, can you include COVID? So we COVID-19, so we can index it and we added it. And it remains a very popular keyword, unfortunately, in, uh, in our, uh, repertoire of, um, let's see, I can see a couple more questions in the chat. Let's see, Adkul is asking, uh, hello Adkul, how many different languages can someone browse the list of concepts in Agravoc by making a language selection in the content field? Let's have a look. So this is, there we go. This is the list of languages. It's about, it should be 42. I think the very, very newest one the, but these are only the only the languages that have more than 150 terms. So I'm going to go back to the front pages to show you. So we have about 58 languages in the back end, but in the front end, we only show you those that have more than 150. So Belarusian is the newest one. We have colleagues at the Belarus, Belarusian Agricultural Library are very active and they've been putting in a lot of Belarusian terms, which is fantastic. So that is the newest one that went was added to the list. So if I go back up here and I need to search for, let's see, food safety. Safety, you can see what I'm type as I'm typing in, it says, do you mean this one? Do you mean this one? Which one are you thinking of? I can actually, I can scroll down. Food consumption statistics, food fraud, very interesting. Food hygiene, food intake. There's a lot of really interesting ones. But I could say, no, I actually want food safety. I can that, but I could, if I wanted to search there, I could search in the 42 available there. But if I, and those are the, the 42 you'll find available there. So um, does that help, Edgar? Otherwise, please uh, let us know. Okay, thank you. I'm glad we could answer that. I can see uh, An Senhen also has a question about how does the curation process work? It's a, uh, it's a, uh, always very busy. It's a great question. If any of the Agrivoc editors who are present would like to jump in and put something in the chat, please go ahead. So FAO coordinates Agrivoc. We work with the University of Vergata here in Rome. Wait, we'll say mute that, and um, they manage the technical infrastructure for us. 
But the, uh, the network itself is a network of 34 organizations that um, to look after something. So if we have brand new concepts coming in, then they will look at them and see, oh, what is the concept of my language? Each month we actually publish on the Agravok website, which maybe somebody can put in the chat in the news, they publish the new ones that were added this month. And the editors will, will also go in even before it's published and say, we have uh, bovine babiosis. We put in some animal diseases this month. There are uh, food safety ones coming in, soil, soil information, soil health, various ones come in. The editors look at the concept in the back end. We have an online editing platform and they add terms in the language. They could add definitions. They could add scope lists to describe it. So these are put in to help people look at this because you may, I may want to look at food safety and say, well, in some languages, food safety and food security are very close to each other. So then it's really helpful to have definitions that explain what exactly do you mean by, by this? And here you can see there's a scope note that also explains this. So this is food safety is about the impact on health. But if you're talking about food safety in the terms of availability, then you should use 10967, which is food security. So the editors are very, very active and they are invaluable when it comes to making sure that we have this in as many languages as possible. We could not do it without that. When something has come in, it is reviewed by a small curation team. And if something is approved, it is then published in the next release, which is usually monthly. We also talk to the editors. They may have questions about where does something fit in the hierarchy? Is it the same as this? How is it different? We, uh, we look for definitions to make sure it's as clear as possible for everyone. So it's, uh, and of course, people are generally working on a volunteer basis. So um, we appreciate their effort and uh, it's really impressive that it's moving ahead so well. So yes, I see some questions here. Let's see in the chat. Just jump in Chelsea if I'm missing something. Let's see, I can see um, Patrick is asking, is it possible to add other foreign languages like Setswana and Botswana and Isazulu in South Africa? Technically, we can add any language that we can have, an, have a language code for, but we, with that, we also need to have an institution that looks after each language. So we, we can put it in, but somebody needs to say, I, can, um, I will be the curator. My organization will be the curator of uh, Setswana then it is possible to do that, yes. So if anyone is from an institution that is interested in this, please get in touch with us and we can have a talk. We do almost everything together online. We have new network, we have calls, we have mailing lists, we have an annual meeting, which I actually managed to have in person this year. Otherwise, it's very much an online, online system. And uh, we try to make it as accessible as possible. But yes, we're, of course, we're always interested in including uh, more languages, especially least developed countries' languages, and that would be really wonderful. So, uh, but the, the, often the uh, barriers having someone to say, I can take on curation, not just sending in a list of 100 translations, but I can look after this for the next two years, five years, 10 years, at least... Uh, someone to help us make sure that there's a quality control in this, because of course we do not speak all of these languages ourselves. We trust that the language, the uh, Agrivoc editors who are very often librarians, information specialists, they could be subject matter experts in fisheries, forestry, animal health, etc. They know that this is a correct term in their language for this concept. So it's very much a um, collaborative effort. I can see Evanson has suggested some uh, keywords. Let's see. So I cannot research directly for, I can look up aquaponics, but I cannot use this. I cannot research for, look up research directly through aquaponics. I can look up aquaponics. Here we can see the concept of aquaponics with the definition related to aquaculture, hydroponics, etc. But I cannot look, use this to look up research directly in Agrivoc. But I can go to a system like Research for Life, like Agris, like uh, CG Space, and I can look for documents and publications and data sets about aquaponics there. 
So then that's why it could be useful also to be able to look it up in your own language, because many of us are not English mother tongue. So we want it to be possible for you to look up things across languages. So uh, I hope that helps, Evanson. Chelsea, am I missing anything? We have... So a question here, rice is the staple food of Bangladesh, but nowadays rice blast is one of the major threats of successful rice production. Do you have any research program on rice blast disease? We don't have any research uh, programs directly on rice blast disease, but again, you could use this to go in and look up information on it. We can see this came in, but we don't actually have very many terms on rice blast disease. This is something we might highlight to our editors and say it would be great if we could add some more languages here. But again, we wouldn't use this directly in Agrifoc. I would go to an information system like Summon, for example, and look up rice blast disease. So there's plant diseases of many, many different ones. So again, somebody might notice that something is missing. They suggest it to us. If it's accepted, we add it to Agrivoc, and the Agrivoc editorial network adds, adds the terms and more definitions. So it can be used because, of course, many people could be using this not only in English, they could, they could be using this in Spanish, in Swahili, in Georgian, in Moldovan in their own information systems in Slovakian. So um, it's important to them that diseases are represented and available in their own languages. Let's see, I see some more questions here. Somebody asked, how do we detect articles from predators? So that's a really good question, Tekla. We know that um, there is a lot of predatorial publishing. So for Agravok, again, we don't necessarily use this directly to, we don't include re actual research on this. So Agrivoc would be used for keywords to find information, but um, as opposed to detecting what is predatory, that is something you would have to um, probably, you would have learned about it in the Research for Life online courses or author aid. There are uh, ways to think about what could be predatory, but Agrivoc is not involves particularly in something that's predatory or not predatory. We had simply a list of keywords in a hierarchy, in a structure to help you find information. Oh, a wonderful question from Kumbo. Thank you. Do you also publish Agrivoc tutorials apart from Zoom meetings? Well, if you go to the Agrivoc website, so maybe somebody can put that in the chat. I'll put there, it in the um, chat now. Okay. There are, there you can look at, there is a, um, list of publications. So there's not so much tutorials as such, but there are publications about Agrivoc, about editing Agrivoc. There's an online course, but it's more, more targeting editors. But at least um, there's information there, like the uh, we have an Agrivoc brochure. It's very short, it's only four pages, but that's available in 26 languages translated by the editor network. So if that's something that could be useful for your institution to say, uh, to have a, to show a, um, a brochure about Agrivoc in your library. It's only four pages, and you could show display that in Kiswahili, in Georgian, Ukrainian, Spanish, French, Russian, Chinese. So we want the, the materials to be available to you. But of course, the Agrivoc website has a lot of information about this. So we, the idea is it should be simple enough to use. You wouldn't need a tutorial to search so much. The main thing is then searching, you no, know, you can switch languages, and also using the wildcard is really, really important. So I see uh, Mercy has her hand yes. raised. I don't know, Mercy. You can, I think you should be able to unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Yeah, I see. Like, uh, there may be some people that joined a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I see a lot of questions that are uh, asking about research publications. So you might need to explain the difference mm -hmm. between Agrofoc as a database and other databases uh, that indexes journals, books, and stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Mercy. That is really useful. I'm turning off my screen sharing so I can see some of your faces again. So yes, 
So a lot of you are asking about, so you wouldn't use, Agravoc is a, it's a thesaurus. It's a controlled vocabulary. So it's a very, very long structured list of keywords. You don't so you use those keywords when you go to a system like your library system, you might be using Scopus, you might be using Summon, you might be using um, other information systems. Even if you're searching online, you're you, you know, very often using keywords. So use those keywords to find information. So it's a, it's a key to help you find materials, but it's not a direct link to something like, you wouldn't go into Agravoc and search for something on animal health or rice disease, rice plus disease. You could take those keywords and uh, use them in an information system like, of course, you've all used, I think you've all used Summon, which is a wonderful resource, but you know that Summon can give you hundreds of thousands of results and you really need to filter down and be precise. Maybe it's rice blast, rice plus disease. You might want to try different alternatives. If you're not sure about the alternatives you want to use, it could be useful to look at, at Agravoc and see what is a different way. Should I be using water conservation, water saving? conservation of water. There are maybe different different um, terminology used for the same concept. And we really also try to talk to research to say, what is the term used when you're talking about a disease, an occurrence, a social phenomena of some kind? Uh, am I talking about social sciences like population distribution, population dynamics? Are there other keywords for this I'm not aware of? But um, that I should be looking for. So again, you would use you you wouldn't search for information directly from Agravoc, but when you're searching, you might want to go have a look there first to say, I need to look up something on food safety. What um, what is the list prov with the terminology provided in Swahili or Spanish, and then go and search in that. So uh, you, you you know. I would really try, you know, try different keywords and then try using a system like Agris, for example. Is so again, if someone has that in the chat, it's a wonderful resource, and um, you will see the difference. That different keywords will give you different results. And it's all about you being able to dig down to find not just ten thousand, but the three ten that you really need for your research and uh, your investigations. Okay, Kristen, can I add on to that? So Please. take, for example, when you are doing your research, mm -hmm. you have got a research question. So take, for example, my research question is to, uh, uh, like, talks about uh, the effects of COVID-19 in Africa. So that is my research question. So going with that complete question in a database mm -hmm. might be difficult. You might not find relevant results that address your information query. So you might actually, from that question, you need to identify what is called keywords. Mm -hmm. Keywords are the most important words in your question. So for that uh, for that uh, topic, for that research question, we can identify keywords like COVID-19 and Africa. Then now I am going to, because uh, when I did my search in any database, take for example in PubMed, I didn't find relevant results. So I want to look for alternative terms to my keywords. So take for example for COVID-19, we saw that Kristen showed us uh, uh, like uh, the search for COVID-19, the keyword for COVID-19 in Agrovo. So I can go to Agrovo because it is a thesaurus. It gives me broader, similar terms, other terms that I can use for my search instead of COVID-19. So there's COVID-19, there is Africa. So if I go to, into a thesaurus like Agrovo, it will actually help me with keywords. So take, for example, for some of you that are in the health discipline, you know mm -hmm. about MESH, which is the medical mm -hmm. subject headings. Those medical subject headings guide you to search in PubMed. So similar to like Agrovo, it guides you to search in agriculture related databases. So I think uh, I just wanted to clarify some misconceptions from the questions that are being raised. Thank you. That's extremely helpful, Marcy. Thank you so much. Also, you know, if for the COVID example, maybe the person, the researcher who published it, 
published it in uh, early during the pandemic. At that time, coronavirus 2019 was the accepted way to describe it. So it's, it was not, it's not the common one now, but it was correct at the time. That's something we also use. We, keep, we have what we call legacy terms, even though now the short form COVID-19 is the most used one, we keep the previous one because it was still a valid synonym and it was useful in the past. And it was used in the past to document and to index things at the time. I saw there was a question about, um, can I search for either? Yes, you can use either. And it could also be a preference. It could be that, um, let's see, so what did you ask? Somebody was asking about alternate terms. Yes, you can You can use both alternate and um, can I use preferred and entry terms together to describe an article? Again, it depends on, on you. If you are the subject matter expert and you have something that you say, no, I want to I actually want to do both. It depends on what the journal recommends, of course. I'm not an in, I'm not an indexing specialist. I know there are some librarians of the crowd. I can see your name here. So you can also feel free to jump in in the chat on this or contribute to us. But yes, I would say if, you know, if say soil health and soil quality in some cases could be synonyms, maybe I want to use both because both are valid. Maybe they're slightly, slightly you know, so there, it depends. It really depends. Let's see. Um, so someone is asking about if I find the right material in the databases, how accessible are full-term publications? That's again a question if you're going to Research for Life platform. You wouldn't get research article text directly from Agrivoc, but you'd use it in a system like Summon to find documents. And of course, we prefer to find uh, Collins. So sometimes you're your database is not easily accessible. I assume to find recent publications. I think this is the question about using research for life. So I will hand that over to Chelsea or to Mercy if you want to answer that. Yes, just about, sorry, just about accessing research for life. So we can put, I can put in the chat here, just a couple useful links to access the, there's the Agora content portal, which is specific to agriculture research. And then there's the general broader research for life content portal, which gives access to all five of the collections, which are the five that I highlighted um, at the beginning. And to access, so I'm gonna put here in the chat, the Agora homepage, and you can actually access the Agora content portal Right from the home page, you'll see on here, search the Agora content portal, and then there's a link. Um, you can also access from the Research for Life homepage, which I'm going to put that link in the chat here too. And there you'll find um, a tab called Access Content, and that will take you directly to the Research for Life Unified Content Portal. Um, in not sure about uh, if you're from an already registered institution or not. Um, that's a whole other <laughs> a whole other subject um, that we actually have gotten into in a couple past webinars. So again, if you have questions about eligibility and registration, I didn't really go over that um, today, but you can email us. So I'm going to put in here right now, agora at foul.org. Um, there's a lot of information again on the Agora website, also the Research for Life website about eligibility and registration. Um, I can also, also share with you the recordings from the couple of previous webinars that Mercy and I have done, really diving into um, the eligibility criteria, um, the registration process, and then Mercy did a great um, tutorial about how to um, search properly in the Agora content portal. So. Again, reach out to us and I can share all of that that content um, with all of you. I don't know if I missed anything, Mercy, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, like just a summary of the eligibility. So we have got uh, two groups of countries that are eligible for research for life. So there is group A that can uh, register and access research for life at no cost. 
And once you have registered for one of the collections, so take, for example, Agora, Hinari, Ardi, uh, you have got access to all the five collections. So that is group A, which is free access. And we have got group B countries that can access the programs at a subsidized cost of 1,500 United States dollars a year. And like uh, just like the group A countries, once you subscribe to one of the programs or collections, you get access to all the five collections. Thank you. And before, like uh, Research for Life accepts institutions, institutional registration, you can't register as an individual. So before you can actually register, uh, because some of uh, the users, they are not aware uh, that their institution is registered. So on the Research for Life website, they've got a list of institutions that are registered for the program. So before you request for registration, just to check if your institution is not registered. If it is registered, you might need to consult your library, your institutional library to get the username and password uh, but like if you are in, in an institution that is authenticated through IP, once you are in the institution's network, you can actually access Research for Life. You don't need login details. So if you have got any inquiries, you can send an email to research for, uh, r4l at researchforlife.org. If you don't, uh, you can't find the login details or maybe... A, the person who was your librarian at your institution, they moved to another institution, they are no longer there, you don't have the login details. You can just to, to, uh, write to R4L at researchforlife.org. Thank you, Chelsea. Well, thank you. Um, I'm just checking through the chat just to see if we missed any questions oh i see we have a hand raised go ahead you can go ahead and ask your question yeah uh, i would like to know uh when the editors are adding terms to the thesaurus uh do they only rely on uh, people they? out there <laughs> when the editors are adding terms to the thesaurus do they only rely on submissions from uh, people out there or do you also do your own research to find out what are the necessary terms to be added to mm -hmm. do you also do your own research to find the terms to add to the thesaurus or you only rely on it or you wait for people to submit to it's you it's a great question terms? it's it's a combination so um mm -hmm. if we have something like soul quality i would for, for the uh for foul languages i would check our terminology resource called FAO term, which has English, French, Spanish, Russian, Chinese, and Arabic, we would post it. But then the editors would put it in their languages, but they might say, I'm not sure what it is in German. And they might talk to a soil expert to say, what is the nuance between soil health and soil quality? The, um, again, if any editors want to say something in the chat, please jump in. So, you know, we, they are responsible for curating Georgian, for example, for Belarusian. They, they do that, but they may be, they may have questions about something and say, I'm not sure about the nuance between food safety and food security. So for that, they might want to look up resources of their own language. It could be research, it could be government websites, it could be publications, but language is complicated. And it's not usually a straight, we always say it's not just translating, it's about localizing it. It has to make sense in your context to so say, what would you use to describe some, if something it's tech, some like a disease or a plant or something is, is very, is clear, is easier in some ways to, uh, to translate. But if it's something it's could be more sensitive, you want to be careful about it. It's a pro, you know, someone has to know what's appropriate. So it's not that they, um, you know, they will usually think about it. And they will okay. put in the terms in their own languages, but they may need to talk to experts, subject matter experts in forestry, fisheries, economic statistics to say, how do I describe this method, method in my language? Okay. And as they will, they know it is not always simple. So I see right. a question uh, about, uh, but that's a uh, great let, question. Let Coco. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I was uh, checking uh, mm -hmm. the term Napa cabbage, Napa cabbage. Uh, is a popular popular food in uh, South Korea and mm -hmm. is uh, becoming uh, global. 
mm-hmm. Napa College. So I tried to check just now on the thesaurus. Uh, it's completely uh, give me blank. There is no anything related to Napa College, but uh, it's very popular in South Korea mm-hmm. and it's becoming global. I myself, I'm in Malawi, Africa. But, uh, you know, because of globalization, I'm also interested uh, with what is ever is happening in other countries, what the foods they eat uh, and other things. So mm-hmm. I'm very interested uh, in the South Korean culture. So I was checking Napa cabbage. It's a, it's a, it's a food. Yeah, but it's not really available in the thesaurus. Maybe in the future you might consider. We can absolutely it. consider it. That's a wonderful suggestion. Every month we add 35 to 40 new concepts. And yeah, sometimes okay. it's indexers, sometimes it's it's editors, sometimes it's other people saying this is a really important word and we need to add it. Can you consider it? So I will put Napa Cabbage on my list of ones to look at before the next release. Yeah, and and maybe we have it with a Latin name, but we don't have the common name. And that is important, especially because we really focus on things that are economically important. And it could be a crop, a disease, an animal, a pest. And uh, we want to include things that are also regionally important. So it's really yeah. helpful to have emerging ones like that. So I've made a strong note of that. And we're almost yeah, at the I'm... top of the hour. But mm. um, there's a question about, I can see somebody says, can international organizations like ETA register? Well, we actually have a really good collaboration with the CGR system. So um, if you want to talk about that afterwards, let us know. I'm not sure if ITA is in that network, but we have Ilari and Icarda and others also contributing concepts on a regular basis. That would be really interesting new, new keywords coming from the CJR. So yes, Agravoc is large, but every month people suggest new concepts. We're happy to hear suggestions. And uh, also if you look for something and it's not there, you can write to us and we, will, uh, we can look at and including something. Yeah, Kristen, there was yes. a hand from Richard mm-hmm. Lamptey, who is the Research for Life Country Connector for mm-hmm. Ghana. Thank you very yeah, much, Messi. Thank you, Christian. Oh, you and and just, uh, just a quick one. I had a, a mail from one of our faculty members. He submitted a paper on the, um, in a journal called Meet, New Journal. And here is the case. Uh, whilst he was submitting a manuscript, they asked uh, about the fact about the APC where Research for Life can do a waiver or whatever for them. And here's a case, the person stated that uh, his institution or his country is eligible to Research for Life products. Uh, and therefore he's eligible for a waiver. But here's the case, you sent it to them and then they replied that, uh, he said that we are unable to waive the open access publication fee as the general meet uh, science offers both gold and subscription publishing model and therefore the person cannot publish on the gold open access platform please with this what can the person do uh, i just had it this is the second one that is coming to me and uh, I, I didn't know how how to uh, respond to the person sorry about that okay thank you richard for your question so as research for life we don't provide waivers but uh, on the research for life website we have got uh, a waiver guideline uh, document or page that uh, gives the users of Research for Life waivers about uh, information about waivers for different publishers. So after this meeting, I'm going to send you that um, at the link to that page, then you can share it with them. Thank you for the question. Thank you very much. I can see okay, there's a couple more. I know. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, just, I, was, I can see there's a couple more questions, but we have to. I think we have to wrap up. We're at the top of the hour, but I've taken note of the questions in the chat. Well, and also just to say one last time, um, if you do have additional questions, you can feel free to email us at fow um, at agora at fow org, and then also at agrovoc at fow org, and we will definitely get in touch and respond to all of those those questions. And we appreciate everyone being here today. And as I mentioned um, at the beginning, once the recording is available, um, we can share that along with the presentation if you're interested in that. Um, and yeah, I don't know, Kristen, if you have any last, last thoughts. Thank you for all the energy and the interesting questions. Yes, thank, thank you, you Mercy everyone. and uh, Chelsea.